Hey, good morning, Tracy. Hi, Sean. Uh, Tracy, we have three folks who've said they're not going to make it today. So the total TSC count will be whatever shows up out of 11. Okay. Uh, Angelo, Arun, and Grace uh, have said they can't make it. Yep. Thanks. All right, welcome everyone to the May 12th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee call. Um, as you are probably all aware, two things that we must abide by. The first one is the antitrust policy notice that is currently being displayed on the screen. And the second is the code of conduct, which is linked in our agenda. So for our agenda today, we have our Standard announcement, uh, the Hyperledger Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. Uh, if you have something that you would like to reach all of the different Hyperledger developers, please uh, consider leaving a comment on the link that is linked in the agenda on that wiki page. Are there other announcements that anybody would like to make? All right, so no announcements. Um, so uh, quarterly reports, we had two quarterly reports come in. Uh, actually, there's three quarterly reports that came in, but the next, uh, the Aroha one's not due to next week, so we won't look at it until next week. Um, the Aries and Indy reports came in. I uh, did not see anything specific coming up on those particular uh, project reports, although I do see that there's uh, still some empty check marks uh, that people haven't had a chance to review them yet. So um, I think we'll just kind of take the opportunity to ask during this call if there's any questions or comments that anybody like to um, make regarding the Aries or India report. Okay, uh, seeing no hands, seeing nobody come off mute, I take that as a no. Um, so please, if you haven't had a chance to review those yet, please take the opportunity to do that. Um, and the, as I mentioned, the Aroha one has come in already for us to take a look at. Um, thank you to the Aroha team for getting that in and we will uh, take a look at that next week when everybody has had an opportunity to, to um, take a look at that. Uh, just FYI, we have the Bevel report that's also due next week, and the other two reports um, that are listed here, we're going to actually be talking about below, so we will get to those discussions here shortly. Any questions at this point about the quarterly reports? Okay, great. Um, so uh, the first item that we have uh, is a couple of decisions. The first one is the default maintainer inactivity policy that then I'll update it for us based on our discussion last week. Uh, I have seen that there are uh, six yeses, uh, check marks plus Danos is seven. And I think Kamlesh, you also commented, uh, which makes that eight approvals um, in the actual PR, um, Dan, I see you came off mute. Yeah, one page I haven't put in that we came in after I opened the vote was a request mm -hmm. to clarify um, who sends the uh, PR to uh, the, the list to, to move people to emeritus status. And I want to change that to say it's the TSC or whoever the TSC chair designates. Um, I think I mentioned that in the chat. Do you want that as a separate PR or can we roll that in with this one with a voice vote to approve that clarification? 
I think I'm fine with uh, rolling it in. I don't okay. have any problems with that. Uh, since I think we're going to do a, a voice vote here anyway. Uh, anybody have any objections to Dano making that change? Actually, the, the verbs I'm going to put in are any TSC member or high privilege staff may file the pull request. Okay. Any objections to that particular change going in um, other than what is already there and been voted on? No, please, let's not have another PR just for that. <laughs> okay. Right. Good, good. All right, so Dana, right. We'll, we'll expect you to make that change. Um, do we feel like we need a formal vote here or do we feel like the um, we've got the majority of people who have voted and maybe we haven't, I guess that, what did I count? Uh, eight, right? Um, I don't count. Yeah, I think it's eight uh, okay. that I saw as a yes. So that is obviously above majority, so. I'm going to assume unless anybody has any objections to that, we will um, go ahead and allow Dana to make that change and merge this in. I have a question uh, yeah, on that as to, I, I mean, just uh, uh, for my knowledge as to what is the time frame that is considered inactive before you remove the maintainer from, like write permissions for the maintainer? So it's three months. I'm not sure. It's six months. Six um, months. No okay. GitHub activity. That's written into the policy. Okay. Um, okay. Before there was no policy, there was just mm -hmm. prodding of the projects to do it. Right, right. Six months. Okay. That's all I was wanting to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any, just last call, any objections to Dano merging this in? All right, Dano, you have to go ahead to make that uh, change and, and merge it in. All right, the next item is also a decision um, to move Hyperledger Bro to an end of life state. Uh, so as you may recall, back at the beginning of the year, we had a discussion uh, with Silas and uh, Casey from Monax about Hyperledger Bro. Uh, at that point, they wanted to move it to a dormant state since Hyperledger Bro came up as uh, needing a project report due. I did reach out to Casey and Silas about this and asked them uh, if they planned on coming back to contribute to this or not. Uh, and, and they did say that they were not planning on um, supporting Bro going forward. So um, as you can see, uh, PR has been created, an issue was created for us to discuss. Um, and as of this morning, I saw that both Sean and, uh, well, Sean approved it and Silas merged this pull request to Archive Bro. Uh, but I did want to have this kind of formal discussion here and formal decision that we will move Hyperledger Bro to end of life state. Um, any discussion that we should have before we? move towards a vote? Yeah, Dano? I read in the Aroha report that came in late last night when I couldn't sleep um, that they were, one of the, their major points was they got RocksDB working with Burrow. So my question is, are you know what projects depend on Burrow and what are their plans going forward? I mean, since, since all the maintainers approved the archiving and shutting down the project, um, I don't think there's any reason to not move it to EOL, but I think it's something we need to um, see how the other projects are going to deal with it. Yep. Jim? Uh, yeah, thanks, Tracy. Uh, in the same vein, uh, I vaguely remember um, the borough team were doing work to, uh, with the um, Sawtooth Lake uh, team uh, on the new uh, transaction family. Uh, with solidities. Um, don't know if we checked with uh, the Salt Tooth Lake team about this, if there's any cross project dependencies. Yeah, thanks, Jim. And Arno? 
Yeah, I mean, it's very much in the same line again, because so I think I reported earlier this year that uh, I had attended a call from the Aurora team and they were not aware at the time we had just moved Borough to Dolman status and they were talking about how they were using Borough and I told them, I said, oh, by the way, are you aware? And so at least, you know, they've been warned that there was a situation that they needed to worry about. But I agree with that. You know, we need to figure out and I guess Jim, I mean, the same for so too. If there are dependencies like this, I, I imagine they need to be aware that this is now being archived. I agree we shouldn't stop that for that matter because if there's nobody to maintain it anyway, it, but practically speaking, it means that each and of, you know, of these projects has to make a decision to either take over whatever they use from the borough project and make it part of their project or uh, stop using it, right? Yeah, so I can I can come up on the Sawtooth one um, because I do recall that when this initially happened and I think you brought the, the Aroha one up um, in conversation on the TSC call that we had reached out to Sawtooth to let them also know that they were, um, that we were, that the project had moved to a dormant state, right? and um, I can't find it currently in my chat, but I do recall them responding back and saying, that's okay. Uh, we actually had forked uh, what we needed into Sawtooth and we've actually deprecated that anyway. Um, so that's what I recall from the Sawtooth side of the house. Um, if I can find that at some point, I will um, put the, the link to that in, uh, in our chat, but uh, I, as far as the Roja, um, do we have anybody on the Roja um, project that is here today? Uh, so I talked that did exactly what I didn't want it to do. So I will remove that. <laughs> so I am on Telegram with uh, Aroha and I had a conversation with Sarah and uh, I don't remember Insov's name, um, and this is what they had to say. So they're aware. Okay. Appreciate that update, uh, Ryan. Okay. Any other discussion or concerns then at this point? All right, uh, do we have a motion to uh, end of life, Hyperledger Bro? Motion. Thanks, Peter. Do we have a second, Ian Nathan? I can second it. Just something quickly to add to the motion. We should probably thank the borough maintainers for all their effort in the community. Yeah, the borough was a pretty significant project for us in terms of helping us stay close to the Ethereum community for quite a long time. So, you know, I don't know if that's something we can add to the resolution, um, but it seems appropriate. Yeah, I definitely agree, Nathan. I think there was uh, some really great collaboration when I actually first joined the Linux Foundation as a Hyperledger community architect and with the, the borough community and Sawtooth and then uh, further on with the Fabric community and bringing kind of the EVM to Hyperledger as a whole and then to these projects individually. So I think there was a lot of good good stuff that came out of Hyperledger Borough. So I appreciate you bringing that up, Nathan. All right, so I think we have a, a motion and a second. Um, is there, uh, I actually, right, I normally let you run a, the vote. Can you just run us through a, anybody opposed, anybody uh, sure. abstain? Uh yeah, and I, I will try to do it in the right order. Um, <laughs> uh, does anyone oppose the motion before the technical steering committee to move borough to end of life status? Does anyone abstain from voting on this? Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I'm not going to count, but by voice vote uh, that the motion passes.
All right, thanks, Ray, for that. All right, uh, so the next item of discussion is an email that Lisa sent to us regarding the future state of Hyperledger Explorer. Um, Vanita, I would like to hand the floor over to you to kind sure. of take the TSC through that discussion and um, what it is that you're asking. Sure, um, glad to do that. Um, as you know, DTCC has been the uh, proponent and maintainer of Hyperledger Explorer for the longest time. And we were very, very active for a few years. And then within our organization, things moved around. So we had fewer contributors from inside, but we did uh, keep on uh, having meetups and try to increase our uh, contributor levels, you know, get more people involved and did quite a few of those up until last year. Uh, with David's um, help, we did a couple more where we showcased Explorer and reached out to the community for more maintainer support. And also, as you all know, that we had applied to get out of incubation several twice, I think, in the past few years, the only thing that we missed out on was the number of contributors. We were that was the only missing factor. Everything else uh, was good. Uh, definitely, a lot of folks are using Explorer. Looking at the number of downloads on the Docker Hub and the number of stars on the actual GitHub, um, definitely there's there's a lot of folks who are using it. So definitely useful for folks. But unfortunately, the only two remaining maintainers from DTCC and Fujitsu are uh, pulled with other responsibilities. So we are looking for other maintainers to take on Hyperledger Explorer to the next stage. So definitely do not want it to die, knowing that so many folks are using it. Uh, so the question I raised to David Boswell was like, how, what can we do? And he put me in touch with IBM's Virad. And it looks like there's a fabric console in Hyperledger Lab. So we had a few chats with him and there were some synergies here that that takes Explorer to one level above where you look at the uh, side uh, where it's a read-only repository. You know, you, you're looking at what's going on in the blockchain, you slice and dice data using Explorer. At the same time, from the administrative side, you could do things with uh, Explorer that Fabric Console offers. So those two together would make a wonderful product that would definitely be uh, welcomed by the community, but uh, after a few talks, uh, it looks like that is not going to happen. Uh, so from the IBM side, we were all ready to go with it. Uh, so now we are back to square one, trying to find out how do we get more maintainers. So several things come to my mind. One is like, how do we appeal to the community? Like we have done meetups, we have asked for more contributors. But I'm not sure if the community knows we are looking actively for actual maintainers. Uh, if community knows about it, maybe someone would come forward. Um, one of the folks I reached out to who had expressed interest is Arun. And he's from the Hyperledger chapter in India. And he is talking to his, um, I guess, uh, uh, management to find out if that is doable. While I'm waiting on that, I had also reached out via this email and Peter approached me also and he had a wonderful suggestion that maybe that some useful parts could be absorbed in Cactus. Cactus looks like is the next level up of Explorer, which is blockchain agnostic. And that is that was also originally the aim of Explorer, Hyperledge Explorer, but we started out with Fabric. And so I, I think something could be done there. That's option number two. Um, so uh, I leave it open to everybody to help, help us decide what should we do next as far as Explorer goes. Uh, I mean, if, if everybody agrees that yes, it, it, we can't find maintainers after, uh, you know, we've tried, we've reached out to the community and uh, then it could possibly be absorbed in Cactus or you know, it could just be archived and no more further development in Explorer. But definitely uh, on DTCC side, we don't have any more folks that we could, uh, you know, lack of resources is uh, wanting us to uh, pull out of it. That's the sum right. total. 
Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks. Vanita, for that. I, I think that was a really good um, explanation of the history of trying to, to get maintainers and, and kind of where the project's at right now. Um, Kamlesh, you uh, raised your hand. Yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you, Vinita. So, actually, uh, Arun and myself, I think, as a division in the India chapter. So, oh, uh, okay. even, to, even today, also discuss about the Explorer feature and uh, kind of talk to the community. Even though there's a Dell incorporation there in the, our um, weekly call, and I asked mm -hmm. them, like, if they can take interest or someone can take a responsibility to become a maintainer, there is an opportunity in the uh, okay. Hyperjet Explorer. Mm -hmm. So that even we are trying as a community level, and I think in India, a uh, couple of organizations keep joining our uh, regular weekly meetings. So even I think Arun also talked to Vinita, and I think we plan some kind of uh, meetups to collaborate within uh, Operation Console and uh, that Explorer. And I think happy to help for that perspective. Uh, yeah, but that is, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware the, of the latest development in that respect is uh, IBM has uh, pulled out of that. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. So there's no further talks of combining Explorer and console. Ideally, that would be a wonderful product. So, uh, yeah. but, uh, but the next step up, in my opinion, is Cactus. You know, blockchain, plastic yeah. explorer. Uh, like explorer is the most most used. Uh, I think who are using the fabric, they are mm -hmm. definitely using the explorer in their their ecosystem. Right. So I do know it's widely used, but uh, what I do not know is is the community aware that there is uh, a danger of this getting uh, becoming end of life and is there something that they should have been given a chance to do something about and that's the part i don't know how to go to the next step um, on that and that also kind of uh, it you know aligns with the, that policy uh, that we were talking about earlier is if the maintainer has not been active for the past six months uh, you know, an activity, so they would be removed uh, from right permission. So, uh, if you have no maintainers left, then what is the next step? What do you What do you do with that project? Like, do you, do, is there a process in place? Like, okay, if the maintainer level falls below three, there is there we we need to do something. Yeah, uh, Nathan. Um. Well, and this brings up a good point is it, once you are completely out of maintainers, it's hard to do a yard sale and offer up code right, right. Maintainer to help onboard anyone new. Um, and that raised the other question about the options available. Um, a lot of them are kind of speculative, meaning they we're kind of offering it up and say this could happen. Uh, of all those options, is there any of them where there's a name associated with it where someone said, this seems interesting to me, or I might put the work in. Otherwise, I'm just not sure if we can count on it actually happening. Or no? I uh, just wanted to add, I mean, uh, my colleague Dave Inyard, who is on the development team, uh, you know, couldn't make it today, but he actually uh, briefed me a little bit before the call. Uh, and, and I just wanted to add a little bit to what I said about the IBM team and the, the interest. And it's true that, you know, what was said is absolutely accurate. and. Uh, what I would add is the reason why IBM has kind of pulled out of this is actually merely a resource issue, really. And uh, they they were interested in the you know the possibilities that this kind of convergence would uh, would bring to the console. But uh, in the end, they looked at the amount of code and uh, they decided they couldn't uh, just take responsibility for all that code. So maybe. You know, having read the comments uh, from, uh, um, I think, you know, Peter said, well, maybe we could take part of it that would be useful to us. We don't want to take everything over. And maybe something like this would also be possible with the operation console. But, you know, the bottom line is the reason primarily has been, well, this is more code than we can possibly take over. And uh, in the end, they decided there wasn't a go. So that's fundamentally the reason for the pullout. And that's pretty much primarily the reason we are also looking for I understand. other maintainers. So. <laughs> so. 
right. Yeah. And I, I, um, Peter, I know you're on the call. I, I think, you know, important just to, to note for those who might not know, right? Uh, Hyperledger Cactus is about interoperability between different blockchain platforms and uh, Explorer is about being able to look at your um, blockchain network to ensure that it's running smoothly and, you know, kind of the number of blocks and, and those sorts of things. So I, I mean, when I hear like this comment about, you know, pulling it into Cactus, I, I wonder exactly what that means because they seem to be focused on two different things. And so Peter, I, I hate to put you on the spot. I know it's early there, uh, early for me as well. Um, but any, any comments to add to your, your email uh, that you sent out to the, the list in response to Benita? No problem, Tracy. Uh, I just I would just want to emphasize the part about picking out the most useful components for the same reason what Arno said and uh, Benita said about the code base being large. And uh, I would say the parts that we could reuse or start maintaining, they would be the ones that are uh, the most important and then the ones that we already have something in our issue tracker for, which is to have this functionality to, to observe, to be able to absorb the state of the blockchain. And uh, the reason why I and a few other people in our, one of our maintainers meetings for that it would be a good idea to have uh, something like this Spain cactus was because of the theme of uh, Explorer and cactus both being types of projects that are meta in the sense that they need to support all, all other types of ledgers or whatever it is that they do, whatever it is that they do. And that was, uh, that's how it started. And uh, I know that's not strictly interop, but at the same time, it's something that's adjacent just on account of this theme. And then I want to doubly underline that uh, we could not, we definitely could not take over the entire code base. It would have to be trimmed down to very specific parts. And then, Another thing to underline is that I could only make any sort of recommendations on what those parts would be if we could talk to people who are running it in production and then we would make the pitch to them saying, what if we pick these components out and then we would uh, start maintaining those as a cactus part would you then be willing to come back and contribute or maybe you would join us maintaining the smaller part? So I would want to to run this little survey where the exist where I would test out the willingness of the existing community who uses it to see if they are also willing to buy into my idea the same way that I would be willing to. And then there's a there's a version of events where Suddenly, a lot of people have their hands up saying, oh, yeah, I mean, I looked at it earlier. It was huge, and I didn't want to deal with it. But now that you you wrote this idea forward, that the small parts that we actually use could be maintained by me. Now I put my hand up to actually be a maintainer or at least a contributor. So my entire proposal hinges big time on the outcome of that survey if if we go out to the community and it's still crickets even after the reduced uh, set of components then my answer would be informed by that as well because if, uh, if, if there's a lot of users but then even with the reduced set of uh, components no one is willing to to stand up and help out with it, then that's uh, that's something to think about for us as well. That's it. Yeah. That, that makes perfect sense to me. I think, yeah, I like the idea of uh, having a survey put out to the larger community, uh, for, you know, for 
explorer code to see you guys use it uh you know how would you like to be you know just get a feel for maintainers for this you know first find out what is the interest uh, it, the 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 problem is it's utility right a tool is is always harder to get that number of maintainers for but we can we can still try so i think we should we should definitely do that survey and if at the end of that survey you know it looks like there are a few people and then that helps you determine um peter uh if any parts of it should be absorbed into cactus and if there aren't any then that next logical step would be to just you know archive the project But okay. definitely give the community a chance. I like the idea too, because uh, I, I feel like we do reach out to them. We are always, you know, doing meetups and, you know, asking for contributors. But we never really ask for maintainers as such. So not sure uh, if folks know that we are looking for maintainers. So that survey would definitely help. So. So I have uh, some commentary here, I guess, to add to this conversation. So what I've heard so far is that there are certain projects and or labs that might be interested in small pieces of Hyperledger Explorer to bring them in. There has been a concerted effort in the past to get additional contributors to come into Hyperledger Explorer. The contributors haven't shown up, which means then you can't turn them into maintainers. Um, I I feel like if we continue down this path of surveying and trying to get somebody interested, we're going to be back here in six months to a year um, with no further progress having been made. And it's it's kind of a concern, right? Because I see that there are people who um, are trying to contribute to explore uh, where I actually redirected somebody yesterday from the fabric uh code contributors to the explorer channel um in discord and I, I guess i'm just very concerned that you know we don't have people right now who are willing to even review those prs and do anything with the project so um you know as i look at this my 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 thought is do we deprecate this at this point which would give the the notification to people that if they are interested in becoming maintainers that um, this would be the option. But of course, deprecation means that you have somebody who's willing to support it for another six months, um, which it sounds like we don't have anybody who's willing to support it for another six months. Uh, or do we just say, you know, this is uh, something that we think is we've done the best that we can and it is now time to call it and say let's archive this. Any any reactions to that from the, the TSC? So Peter? if if some yeah, support ahead, is Janine. needed, yeah. So if some support is needed for a few more months, I can I can definitely uh, you know do something about it from our side to see. Uh, that would be just be maintenance mode like it has been for the past like nine months. I think the last release that was pushed out was last August and there have been no new releases. It's totally been, um, you know, looking at the PRs and, and you know, doing something about it. So but Fujitsu, one person from Fujitsu and one person from the DTCC, I could get them to be, a, you know, a, be available the next few months for support if that is needed. But that's that's about it. Yeah, there won't okay. be any new development. Right, understood, understood. Which I mean, deprecated state is the intention to say that in six months we'll move this to an end of life state, okay. um, but we are willing to maintain it for another six months in case people okay. have anything that they want to come right. in or or participate in. So that's that's kind of the the reason that I was thinking that. Um, okay, but sure. That's good to know, uh, Benita. Thank you, and Peter. The other thing we could do is uh, end the fly fit now and do the survey at the same time. I think it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it might actually help the survey. That's the point I was going to make earlier, which is that, you know, we, we say, yep, this is not in the fly, fit. but we also put it right there with huge letters that there's a survey where we are looking to um resurrect parts of it 
and that if you are serious about helping out with that, then contact us. And that would give it weight because, uh, you know, if, if you ask people a year ago, please come contribute, a lot of them may have thought, well, I'm using it. It's kind of important, but I'll just let someone else contribute because I'm busy. And then everyone's thinking that, you know, the there's a name for that problem. And everyone, think, everyone thinks that someone else will do something. So, but then if it's end of life and you're actually using it, it's important to you for whatever reason, to the point that you're willing to help, you're going to think about it much more seriously now that, you know, the, the message is up there saying this is done. So I'm not saying that we should definitely do this. I'm just saying, in my opinion, this is also a credible option to think about where we just do the end of life, but literally on the same part of the readme, in the same paragraph, we say, please leave a comment in this issue that we open, which is a survey where you could explain what you're using it for, how important is it to you, and would you be willing to contribute if we put some parts out of it somewhere else, and uh, which parts those would be, which is very valuable data for us in the future if anything happens. All right, thanks, Peter. Arno? So I don't know if I would go as far as having a survey per se, but I think Peter is touching on a, a, an interesting point, which is when we archive projects, it would be good if there was a way we could communicate. And maybe this is like in the description. I don't know what we have now, but there should be something that says, hey, if you know this project was archived, but if you have an interest, you know, in, in contributing, resurrecting this project, feel free to contact the TSC or something along those lines so that we can communicate to people that that's always a possibility because if I'm an external party, I may not even think that this is a possibility, which I think it is. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think anybody would be opposed if, you know, if take the example of Explore, if we decide, okay, sorry, there's just not resources into this, we move it aside. If it's six months, a year from now, somebody shows up and say, hey, I'm really interested in this, I will take it over. I don't think we would say no. Yeah, completely agree, Arno. I think, um, you know, this could be something that we do as we move these to um, archive is also add a note at the top of the readme, right? That basically says this project has been archived. Uh, if you're interested in uh, resurrecting this, please contact the Hyperledger TSE at whatever TSC um at like that. Org, whatever it is right um yeah exactly i think i think that makes a lot of sense right it, same as like we could do that right now with the the borough um project yeah. although it has been archived i think already so um it might be a bit difficult to make that change i'm not sure how difficult it is to make changes on code that's archived but uh yeah i do i do think having some sort of note is is useful All right, any other comments? Um, it's just mechanical. Yeah. So if <clears throat> if someone has text they want to add to the borough readme or this readme, um, you know, I can archive it, slip in the change and re-archive it. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, thanks, Troy. Um, I am happy to provide some uh some text and then we can get that into the borough one and maybe any other ones that we've archived since um there recently uh brian you brought up this uh security stuff on blockchain explorer of some things that are critical and high priority that have been uh created as far as issues was there um commentary you wanted to add around that Right. Uh, the commentary is I, based on the high number of uh, the there are twenty five critical or high severity uh, issues. I don't think anyone should be using it as is. Um, if you're rolling out uh, Explorer somewhere, there are a lot of issues in the code. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out 
is we already have pull requests that have been opened since September of 2021. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it you know I think the next step is end of life, and that will just acknowledge the situation that we're in, which is there are a bunch of security problems. No one is merging. Uh, essentially, pull requests are are not being merged. Um, and then we, if someone shows up and, and wants to take it over, then we applaud them and you know make it happen. So I, I, I just, you know, in, in its current state with all the security alerts, I I think another, whatever, three to six months of not end of life is is not a good signal to send. All right, thanks, Ryan. Uh, other thoughts or comments? So Vanita, preference or thoughts on the two kind of suggestions that have been out there around deprecated or slash end of life based on the conversation that you've heard? Um, either one is fine, whatever. The steering committee seems uh, is the next logical step is fine with me. All right, thanks for that. So I've heard uh, end of life from a few folks. I think uh, I haven't heard from everybody though. Is there, do we have any sort of consensus at this point? Well, uh, if you, Put a motion before the TFC to end of life, and then people vote against it. Then we know. Can I ask why? I mean, we talked about vulnerabilities. Are these public? Uh, sort of, but no. Um, <laughs> they uh, they're public. The TSC members are in a special uh, permission group, so. You have the ability to see those. Um, they are private to the maintainers. Uh, the PRs that get created are, uh, you know, let me take a look here. So like these PRs uh, just say that it has a vulnerability, but they don't say what it is. But there, uh, there's nothing stopping anyone. If you fork this to your account and turn on dependabot you will see all of this so is it public not directly on the on this page but so you know you there, can discover it very easily these are easy to fix right typically dependabot you just say okay merge sure but this is uh, like perhaps uh what seven of these and there are 42 security issues. So for whatever reason, um, like these ones that are, these two that are on, on high, it couldn't generate the, uh, oh. like, you know, if, if you click here, it says it cannot update to a non-vulnerable version because of this uh, dependency conflict. Okay, so there is so an issue that requires some work. Yeah, there, uh, the ones that it can't auto-generate do, do generally need you know uh, some depend some uh, small dependency updated and then you need to retest everything uh, to make sure the things still work so it's not quite as mechanical and so let me ask Vinita I mean when you said you could you could possibly maintain for another six months but without mm -hmm. doing further development does that include addressing these kind of issues or not yes yeah we, we could take care of that because you know, that seems like something that should right. be pretty high on the list if we wanted to. Otherwise, we, they, I, in my opinion, if we don't do at least this kind of stuff, there is no other choice than putting aside Understood. with a big label mm -hmm. saying, watch out. 
and maybe we don't get into the details, but we would have to say, you know, there are known issues. Don't use this in production or something. But maybe we want to archive anyway, but uh, it would just make it more obvious that it has to be. That's what I was trying to get at. I, I, I think maybe we should still have a, you know, a warning so that once it's archived, people don't say, oh, but I can still use it if we know there are issues with it. So this is the warning uh, at the top of Hyperledger Composer that Simon put in. So I think something along these lines yeah. would be uh, appropriate. Okay, um, so <laughs> back to the question of, do we have any sort of motion that anybody would like to make on this uh, as far as what the, the future direction should be? Given that it's very easy, as Ryan just reminded us, mechanically, it's very simple, right? Archiving a repo, of re or vice versa, I think we should move it to end of life or archival and, and, and kind of see if anybody, you know, reacts to it. Because I agree with what Peter was saying earlier, people tend to take the easy way out, right? Maybe they do use it, maybe they want to keep it, but they're like, well, as long as somebody else does the work for me, I'm just going to keep it a low profile. In a way, you know, You've, we've been trying to get people to step in. They haven't. If we just, you know, it will force the issue. It's like, well, either now you step up and you, you know, we can earn archive it and you can take over or it is archived. Don't use it anymore or use it at your own peril. So I'm in favor. So let's uh, let's see if we can then have a vote to end of life hyperledger for today. Does anyone Again, with the with the proper text to say you know if people are interested to take it over we can definitely reopen it. I agree. I agree, Anna. Peter. Oh, I was just going to. Say the same thing Arnold just said. Just wanted to make sure that that is part of the motion. Okay. So the, can I get a motion to end of life Hyperledger Explorer with text in the readme about uh, the ability to on archive if people are interested in uh, taking on maintainership? I'll move. Thanks Arnold. I have a second. Second. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Dano. Um, all right. So, Ryan, I think a roll call vote would be good, given that we didn't hear from everybody. Okay. Uh, on the motion before the uh, the TSC, Jim, how do you vote? I vote yes. Cam Lash. Uh, yes. Nathan. Yes. Peter. Yes. Tracy. Yes. Troy. Yes. Arno. Yes. Artem. Yes. Bobby. Yes. Dano. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so the motion passes. There are four people on the TSC who are not here. So uh, it passes, whatever, eight to four. All right, thanks, Ray. And we need to uh, thank you to yourself and to the rest of the maintainers from DTCC and Fujitsu have put so much effort into Hyperledger Explorer over the years. Um, as, as we, and if we hear from anybody who would like to take on maintainership of this, uh, we will definitely let you know. Um, Thank you. And 
Yeah, thanks. Thanks for bringing this to us today. Thank you for all your support. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, we are 10 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to, um, for the project families task force, what I'm going to do is set up a off cycle meeting since we seem to have uh, in the last few uh, TSC meetings not been able to get to the task forces. So I'm going to set up a separate meeting for that. I think uh, the plan is not for this upcoming Tuesday, but for the following Tuesday. Uh, to put something on the calendar. So if you're interested in joining that, please uh, check out the chat on Project Families and I will ensure that the information is linked there in that chat. Uh, next week, I will not be able to attend the TSC. Dano is going to run uh, the TSC meeting for us um, and ensure that things continue forward. I know that there's a discussion that Arun wants to have on the security task force next week. Um, if there's anything else, definitely let us know and we'll make sure to get that added to the agenda. Uh, Dano. Um, on the subject of off uh, call task force calls Tuesday, there's one for the Project Gaps Task Force. We haven't had an on cycle call, but I think it'll be a good opportunity to synthesize uh, the discovery we did in the TSC meeting and in the last off cycle call. So when we do come back before the TSC, which probably won't be next week if uh, the uh, the security discussion is going to go as long as expected, but the week after, we'll be able to, to get some concrete recommendations. So that's, I ask people who are interested in the project gaps to call in Tuesday at the same time as this Thursday call is. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Dano. Um, so for the next two Tuesdays, you'll have some uh, meetings at uh, the same time to, to join for the task forces that we have going on. Uh, so, uh, is before I close the meeting, anything else that anybody would like to add to today's meeting? All right, uh, so since there's nothing, uh, thanks all for attending and uh, we will, well, Dana, we'll talk to you, I guess, next week. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. All right. Tracy, thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Peace, guys.